Welcome back aliens, my name is Davin Reddy and in this video we will see the difference between comparator and comparable. When to use comparator, when to use comparable. So let's get started. Now what we'll do here is first of all let's create a list of values. Normally when you want to use comparator comparable, this is where you will be using it. So let's create a list of values and I will say I want to create a list of laptops. Now can we do that? So yes, we can do that. We can get a list of laptop provided you have a laptop class and you can see we do have it here. Now we don't have any variables here. Let me create some variables. I would say private int. Uh, the first one would be laptop. Let's say let's let's name it as laptop brand. And then the next one would be I want to create a amount of RAM it has. And then I want to create I want to make one more variable which is price. Again we can have some more variables, but then this is enough. So we got a brand, we got RAM, and we got price. Now here I want to assign. A getters and setters for this. So I will say right click, generate so getters setters, and select all the variables. Click on OK. Now, once we got getters setters, let me also use our two string methods. I will say source two string, and we got all these things. Now, once we got a laptop here, that's cool, right? Let's go back to runner. If I say list of laptops, and if I say labs here equal to new, add a list, and if I say okay, we got a list, right? And let me import the package for list, and we got it here. Okay, so we got a list of laptops. You know, better way would be I want a constructor to assign the value. So I would say right click and say source. I want a constructor with fields. So I will say select all, click on OK. Let me add some laptops. So I will say labs dot add. I want to add the first laptop by saying new laptop. And here I want to pass those values. So the first thing I have to pass is the laptop brand name. So I would say the brand is Dell and I want to spe specify the RAM amount of RAM it has. So let's say 16 GB and the price is let's say $800. Okay, so we got the first laptop here. Let's go for one more. I will say labs dot add. I will say new laptop and this laptop let's say this is Apple and I want to say this has let's say 8 GB RAM but the cost is let's say $1200 because as you know Apple machines are costly and I would say labs dot add one more. We'll say new laptop and we got let's say this is Acer and Acer also has let's say 12 GB RAM. The cost of Acer is let's say $700. Okay so we got these three laptops here right and now what I want to do is I want to sort them. Now basically when you whenever you have a list of integers when you have list of string we can very easily sort those values by saying we uh, we have a class called as collections collections dot sort in which you just have to pass a list it, it will work so if you pass labs I mean if you especially if you have a list of integers then it will perfectly work but in this case you can see it is not working so list of integers will work list of string will work but list of laptops is not working what this sort will do is this sort will sort the values based on some parameter right example let's say if you pass five values and if you say hey sort it now your Java framework is smart enough or the collection framework is smart enough to know that when you say sort numbers you, you have to sort them in ascending, ascending order but in this case how do you sort this laptop ascending order on which parameter you want to sort maybe you want to sort based on the brand name maybe you want to sort based on the ram maybe you want to sort based on the price we have not specified the parameter here right and that's why this will not work so i will just click on sort so you can see uh, if, if you are aware of our generix so what it's saying is it will take only those things which are comparable. So this sort method it will accept only those things which are comparable. Now what it is. So if you want to sort your laptop, you need to implement a interface called as comparable. Otherwise it will not work. So the best thing you have to do is you have to implement an interface called as comparable and that's where now you can sort them. Can you see that it is gone? So when you say you want to pass a list, you have to make sure that whatever list you have, all the values in them are comparable. And the way you do that is by implementing comparable. Now you can specify a logic. So you can have your own logic here by specifying what parameter you have to compare this. And to implement that, we have to implement a method which is compare to. So compatible interface has this method called as compare to. And let's say this takes laptop object. I would say laptop 2. So this is taking a laptop 2 object. Now what happens is this will sort, right? So this sort method will sort all the all the laptops. But the concern here is which sorting technique it implement doesn't matter. You know, that's the power of Java, right? The object oriented programming. You're not concerned about the implementation. What you're concerned about is you're getting the output. Now, when you say sort internally, it will try to swap values. So if you have seen all the sorting techniques in, in algorithms, 
You must have seen that, right? It's all about when to swap and when not to swap. So here in the compare to, we just have to specify when to swap and when not to swap. So basically you'll be comparing two objects and by comparing those two objects, you will specify when to swap and not to swap. But here the problem is you are passing only one object, right? How can you pass two objects? The thing is compare to is a method of laptop class. So for sure to call compare to method, you need one object. So that means by default, you have an object which is calling compare to, and you also have one more object which is getting passed. So in total, there are two objects which are acting here. The first object which is calling this method, the second object which you are passing it here. Now, how do we access an object which you are calling? So let's say if you are using an object lap one and by, by using lap one object, you are calling compare to, how do we access that object here? So basically we use a this keyword to access that, right? So we can refer that with the help of this keyword and then the second object is laptop. Now, how do you compare these two objects? So compare to says you just return me some values. It may be a positive value, a negative value or zero. Now when to return what? So if you think the first object is, the, is greater than the second object, you return positive number. If the first object is less than the second object, you return a negative number. And if the first object and the second object are same, then you return zero. So what I mean by that is if you say, I will write in a comment, I will say this, if the first object is greater than the second object, uh, now based on whatever parameter you want, so in that case you will return, you will return a, a positive value. So I will say plus. If the first object is less than the second object, you return a negative value. And if the first object is equal to the second object, you return zero. Now, how do we implement this here? It's very simple. You simply say if, if this, uh, okay, now on which parameter you want to sort. So when I say I want to sort laptops, I want to sort them based on the RAM. So the first laptop will have the least RAM and the last laptop will have the highest RAM. Uh, in that case, you will say this dot RAM or maybe get RAM is greater than lab2 dot get RAM. In this case, you will return a positive value. This positive number can be anything. We can say uh, 356. You can use any positive value. But why to specify such a big number? Okay, 356 is just a random number. You can also specify 1 or you can specify 250. You can specify 500. doesn't matter. Any positive number. So I will say a plus 1 and else you will say return minus 1. You can also verify if this dot get RAM is equal to equal to lab 2 dot get RAM. You can return 0 if they are, if they are equal but then that's fine this should work. So we are comparing it, right? Now let's go back to runner. Let's verify if they are sorting it. But how do we know that they are sorted? So let me just print the entire collection here. I will use a enhanced for loop to print the collection. So I would say laptop L colon uh, labs and then I will print one by one object. I will print L. Let's verify if it is working. Let's run this code. And you can see that we got the output and all the laptops are sorted based on their RAM. We got 8, 12 and 16. It's that simple. So what you do is if you want to sort a collection of values or a list of values, what you do is you implement a comparable interface. So every class need to have a comparable if you want to sort them. So this is perfect. Okay, that's about comparable. Okay, I hope you enjoyed, you understood what is comparable. But now the next point is what is comparator and why do we need comparator when you have comparable? Now we'll be using comparator in two, two situations. The first situation is what if you got a class and this class is not implementing any interface. Imagine, you know, the thing which we have done here, let's say if you don't have this, now what you will do? In this scenario, you cannot sort the values, right? Then you will say, okay, we have to make sure that you have those interfaces or you have you implement that interface and you, you implement that method. The point is what you get this class from somewhere else. So maybe you are using some third party library and that library has this class. Now, of course, you cannot change the source code, right? You have a class file. Now what you will do in that case, what you do is you, so if you can say sort, you can give a comma and you can specify the logic here. See the, the sort method is only concerned about the logic, right? So can you pass a logic here? And the answer is yes. If you can see the sort method, it takes two parameters also. It takes a list first and it takes a comparator object. So basically it takes two parameters. So you can pass one list or you can pass two parameters. That's the first scenario where we'll be using comparator. You can specify your logic with the help of comparator. The second scenario is even if you have this logic here, so even if I say you have implements comparable, you have this method, what if I want to sort them based on some other parameter? 
because by default it will be getting sorted by on based on RAM. I want maybe I want to sort based on price. Then what you will do is you will pass compare again. So let me pass a laptop object and let's give a comma and here we have to pass an object of comparator and the way you do that is by saying compare uh, comparator so you will use comparator interface and I will say this comparator is working with laptop I would say comparator com, com equal to new comparator now basically comparator is an interface so of course we cannot directly get object of that right so we have to define the class here itself this is basically anonymous in a class if you're not if you're if you don't know what is anonymous in a class uh, you can watch one of my video on anonymous in a class I do have a video on that so this is where this is how you instantiate the interface by creating a class anonymous in a class here now which method we have to define so if i go back on the in the comparator you can see the method name or method, the method it has is compare method name is compare so i will say public in compare and this compare takes two parameters if you can see here it takes two parameters so i would say it is laptop l1 comma laptop l2 so basically we got two laptops here now in the case of comparable, we were comparing with this, right, the current object and laptop. But in this case, we have those two objects here itself in the parameter. So what you will do, you, you will use same use same logics. If the first object is greater than, so I will say if l1 dot get price is greater than l2 dot get price, you will return a positive value. I will say return one, else return zero. So now we we are having our own logic just pass a comparator object here your job is done so now it will sort the values but based on the price so if you run this code you can see oh it's not working something went wrong oh sorry i just made a mistake here it should be minus one a negative value right and let's run this code now and you can see that we got 700 800 and 1200 it's that simple so when you will use a comparator when you have a class which is not implementing an interface example if i even if i remove this now we don't need comparable if you're using comparator so let's go back to runner and you can see it, is, it will get it will get sorted because we are passing a logic so when will you use comparator two situation first when your class is not implementing comparable and second situation is when you want to change the logic or when you want to change the way it sorts the value now you might be thinking when we were sorting the list of integers it was working because integer class so all the classes in Java, you know, the integer class, if you click on integer, integer class, you can see that it implements compatible. If you talk about string class, even string class implements compatible. So all the inbuilt classes which we use, where we store values, they all implements compatible. But by default, if you sort those values, they will have their own logic. What if you want to have your logic, then in that case, you will use comparator. So I hope you understood some difference between comparable and comparator. If you have any more questions on this, let me know in the comment section. And I hope you like this video. Click on the like button and do subscribe for future videos. Thank you so much for watching everyone.